And here's an example of what we're going to be learning to implement. So we have in-app wallets here, and we can easily implement this using our connect button UI component here with the third web SDK. Now, by default, we can have all options here, and these are all the options that we support with in-app wallets. We have social logins like Google, Apple, and Facebook. You can sign in with an email, which is going to give you a one-time password you have to verify and then sign in. You can sign in with phone number. It'll send you a one-time password via text. And then we have pass key so a user can use things like their fingerprint or face scan uh, on their device to create and generate a wallet for them. We'll also go over how you can select and customize what you want to show to your users when they sign in. So maybe you only want to provide email only. You can do that. Maybe you want to provide only social logins. You can do that as well. Or maybe you want to provide just a phone or pass key option. You can do that as well. So we give you the full customization within the connect button UI component to show all options if you want to show all options for in-app wallets or pick and choose which options you want to show to your users in order for them to sign in and connect a wallet to your application. Hey everyone, Sean Watasa here back with another tutorial video and in today's video, like mentioned earlier, we're going to be talking about in-app wallets. An overview of what we're going to be covering in this video, we're first going to take a look at our documentations and go over a little bit about what in-app wallets are and how they can help us build Web3 applications. Then we'll jump into our code editor where we'll show you how to implement the in-app wallets utilizing the connect button UI component and show you how in just a few lines of code, you can add this support to simplify the onboarding process for your users into your Web3 application. With that being said, let's jump on the computer here. And let's take a look at our documentations and look into what exactly is an in-app wallet. On my computer here, I'm in our third web docs. We'll link the docs to in-app wallets down in the description below so you can check that out and follow along. But let's before we jump into this, let's talk about like why, why do we need in-app wallets? What pain points does this help solve? And why would you want to use something like in-app wallets? So if we look at some of the pain points in onboarding users to a web three application. Normally what users will have to do if they've never interacted with a web three application before is they need to create a wallet. This means they have to go create something like a MetaMask wallet or something. They need to know their seed phrase, how to keep their private key secure, all of these things. And there's a quite a bit of a learning curve for someone who is not familiar with all of this. So what in-app wallets was created to solve was can we create a wallet and use this wallet created to connect a user to a Web3 application by providing them the authentication methods that they're familiar with already. So things like a social login so they can sign in with Google or maybe uh, sign in with an email, get sent a one time password, same thing with phone number, or maybe they just want to sign in with their touch ID or face ID or biometrics, depending on uh, the device that they're using. And that's what in-app wallets allows a user to do. They can create and connect a wallet using those familiar web to authentications that they've used in previous applications before. Now let's take a look at our documentation and we can see exactly how in-app wallets work. That way we have a little bit of a better understanding of it. So you can look here um, when a wallet is created. So a user signs into their application, uses an email, social login, methods that they're familiar with, and a wallet is generated on the user's device. When a wallet is created those corresponding wallet keys for the wallet are split into three shards and this uses Shamir's secret sharing algorithm and these are the three shards that they are separated into and where they are stored. So one shard is stored securely on the user's device. This is for web applications. This is stored on the browser or mobile apps or the secure enclave of the device. The second shard is encrypted and stored in Amazon KMS using a key that is known to third web. And then finally, the third shard is encrypted by the user's authentication and is stored on Amazon's KMS as well using the user's authentication, not a known key that third web knows, but the user's authentication as the third shard. So there's no way that third web has a way of decrypting and accessing that key because it again is being encrypted by the authentication of the user. So you can see here, use this is kind of a visual workflow on what happens when a user signs in with an in-app wallet. So user authenticates using something like an email or social login. 
uh, then the client side generation of the public and private key pairs are generated and the generated private key is sharded into those three shards one stored on device stored on third web server encrypted with a key known by third web and then the second the third one is stored on third web server encrypted by the user's auth. Now on top of that recoverability, because a user is using a auth method like an email or a social login to be able to access two out of the three keys, a user just needs to have access to their authentication method. So they need to reset a password or something on their email or social login that of course is what's giving them access to two out of the three keys, the shard A and shard C in this image above because that is stored on the user's device and the other one is stored and encrypted by the user's auth. Now some things to keep in mind when using in-app wallets is the scope of the wallet. Unlike a Web3 wallet where, you know, I take my MetaMask wallet and I can connect it to an application, I can then take that MetaMask wallet connect it to another application. When you use an in-app wallet, it is scoped to an application per third web API key based on the API key used in the application that is utilizing in-app wallets. It is scoped to that API key. So if you built two different projects using third web project one, project two, uh, and you use separate API keys for each of those projects. If you use in-app wallets on both those projects, your users will end up with different wallet addresses when they sign in, even if they use the same sign-in method. So you can see down here in this visual example, we have app one, app two, and app three. The user is still signing in with the same email, but because each app uses a different third web API key, the wallet generated is scoped to the application per API key. So that is why you'll see separate and different wallet addresses for each app. Now users can still view all of their applications scoped uh, in app wallets in a single view. They can come over to this link right over here. So this is going to take all of their wallets based on a let's say social login, and they'll be able to view all of those applications and the NFTs and assets that they hold within each one. And then down here, you can see scalability. We support up to generating 100 wallets per second by default, and the support can go higher up to 3000 wallets per second. But if you do need to scale higher, you can just contact our sales team for more information about that. So that was kind of a overview of how in-app wallets work. Now let's jump into our code editor and we'll show you how easy it is to implement in-app wallets into your Web3 application. So I'm gonna open up my code editor here and this video is part of our Web3 developer course and we have a repo link down in the description below, or you can follow our previous video on how to get started and how to create a new project using ThirdWeb's CLI. So in those repo links down below, we'll have a couple branches, a complete branch if you wanna just take a look at the code that we're gonna be going over in this tutorial, or you can follow along with the separate course branch, which will give you a blank template like I have right here. So you can follow along with exactly how we're implementing the, and you can do it yourself. If you want to just take a look at the code, you can take a look at the other repo link down below. But if you are following along with the course branch of the repo, you can see here we're going to be in our in-app wallet and we're going to be under our page.tsx file. And you're going to have your template here, which should give you something that looks like this which will provide you something that looks like this. So it's gonna look like a lot like that demo that we showcased in the beginning of this video, but we're not gonna have any of the connect buttons here. Uh, we're gonna be adding them in and showing you how to implement in-app wallets. So you can follow along with us here. We're gonna come back. We'll just take a quick look at what we have here. We have a header, which is just our title image and a description of the page here. And then down here at the footer, we have some links to the YouTube video, the GitHub and going back to our main menu here. And then up here, you can see we have the components that we're gonna go over, uh, all options, email only, social only. And right up here, we have our in-app wallet options displaying all four of those components down here. So that's just a quick overview of what this template is. And let's just get started and let's first implement adding all the default in-app wallet options. So we can add this simply by creating a connect button component here on our page. Now connect button component, we do need to provide it a client here and we'll provide it a client here from our client.ts file. 
And if you've been following along with the previous videos, uh, we'll link down again below in the description videos on how to get started with Third Web and using Third Web CLI. But essentially, you're going to create a client.ts file, which creates you a Third Web client here using your Third Web API key. And we need to provide that to our connect button UI component. We'll link videos on that down in the description below as well. But if we just take a look at the default connect button, right? We have a connect button here. We have all of these different login options. We have social logins. We have MetaMask, Coinbase, all of our different Web3 wallets. But maybe we only want to provide a user just the ability to sign in with in-app wallets. Maybe we don't want to give the option for Web3 wallets. We just want a user to sign in with a web or a in-app wallet. So what we'll do here in our connect button, we'll provide it the wallets that it should be offering our users to connect with. And in here, we need to provide it an array. And all we're going to provide in this array is an in-app wallet. So that is the only option that we're going to provide our users to be able to sign in and connect with. So we come back here. Now when we hit connect wallet, it only shows the modal with the in-app wallet options. We have social logins, email, phone number, and pass key. So social logins, they can sign in with something like their Google address or their Google account. They'll select their email that they want to sign in with. It'll generate a wallet for them. You can see right here, we have a wallet generated for us ending in 4C38. Uh, we can disconnect. Uh, I'll put in my email here. I'll hit send. We're going to get sent a one-time password to our email. So I'll wait for that to come in and then put it in. And we'll put this in here. It'll verify that one time password and then sign me in right over here. Then again, creating me a wallet. I'll disconnect. We'll go through the other options. So phone number, it'll send us the verification for that. We just put that in. User will verify that and they get generated a wallet right here. And then finally, we have the pass key option, which is if someone is using a device and they want to use like their fingerprint or biometrics, they can. Uh, because I'm recording, I have to manually input my uh, password there. I can't use my fingerprint right now, uh, but you can see that will also generate a user, a wallet, and then they can sign in. So disconnect that. And those are all the different in-app wallet options that a user has to generate themselves a wallet and connect to your Web3 application. And they can start interacting with the blockchain with it. Now, what if we want to not provide all those options for our users and we only want to provide specific, maybe only two or one out of the different options that we have. So we'll go over how to do email only first. So maybe we only want to provide the option for a user to use an email address to sign in to our application. So we're going to come down to this email only component here. I'm going to copy the connect button component up here, uh, just paste it in under wallets and under the in-app wallet here, we're going to provide some different options here. So we want our auth method here and we're going to set the options here. And the options for that auth is we only want, uh, we're going to provide that with an array and we only want to provide it the ability to uh, take email as the only sign in method. So again, with the wallets within the in-app wallets, we set the auth, we set the options to just email right over here. So we come back here, uh, we hit that. It'll only give us the ability to sign in with email. User will put in their email, get sent a one-time password, and then they can sign into our application, connect a wallet. Uh, for social, uh, we'll come back here. We'll copy this right here, and then we'll come down to the bottom here. And instead of email here, we have a few different social options. So maybe we want just Google. Uh, if we wanna just say Google is the only way that you can sign in, to this app, uh, we can come here. Uh, social, they'll have just Google right over here. Uh, maybe we wanna allow Google and we wanna allow Facebook, right? We can come back here and now you have the Google and Facebook option. And by default, uh, we also offer Apple ID as the other option as well. These are three built-in social logins. You can also provide your own custom auth if you wanted to as well. So if you wanted to build your own auth for someone signing in with something like X or GitHub or Discord, you can create your own auth method like that, allow a user to use that. But out of the box, we do provide Google, Facebook, and Apple. So if you come back here again, then you'll have those three social logins. And then finally, we'll just take this component here for the one last one. Uh, if we want to say use phone and pass key, all we need to do is Right here, provide this with our phone and passkey. And we can, of course, choose 
out of the different options here, just provided the array of the options, the array of the options that you want to allow users to authenticate with. Uh, in this case, it was just a phone and pass key. We'll come back up here. So the last one here you can see is phone and pass key only. Um, maybe we want uh, social logins and pass key here. So we can just say uh, Google, um, we'll say Facebook, uh, and then pass key. We can come here, we have Google, Facebook, and Passkey. So again, just provide it uh, the array of options for your auth there, the options that you want to allow your users to sign in with. If you want all options, you just provide wallets here, the in-app wallet, and all the default options will be provided to your user. And that's how simple and easy it is to implement in-app wallets to your Web3 application. Again, this is going hand in hand with the connect button UI component. If you wanna watch a video and learn a little bit more about that component, we'll link that down in the description below. You can check that out. And again, this is part of our Web3 developer course playlist here on YouTube. So we have a bunch of videos showcasing all the cool features and tools that ThirdWeb has to offer. And there you have it. That was a tutorial video covering in-app wallets. We covered what in-app wallets are, how they work. We took a look at the documentation and learned how in-app wallets can help our user experience uh, and help onboard people who aren't maybe familiar with Web3 applications uh, and creating wallets and how we can get them to use our Web3 apps. And then we showed you how easy it is to implement in-app wallets with just a few lines of code using the Third Web Connect SDK along with the Connect Button UI component. But if you found some value in this video and you liked it, don't forget to give this video a thumbs up, hit that subscribe button, and don't forget to turn on the notification bell so you don't miss out on more tutorial videos just like this. If you need any help or support, we'll drop some links down in the description below along with other links to other resources, but you can open up a support ticket and our support team will be happy to help you out and answer any of the questions you have. But again, I hope you folks enjoyed this video. You found some value in it. Until next time, see ya.